hey welcome back so in this lecture let's test this application so I hope you have done all the connections and if you are using USB logic analyzers or any analyzers so you can connect uh, you know the logic analyzer to CAN TX pin just to observe the uh, message which is coming over CAN TX so you cannot connect over CAN RX because CAN RX is disconnected right and uh, if you are having USB logic analyzer then check whether it supports analog or not so if it supports analog then you can connect it to can H because it's analog signal right and if your logic analyzer doesn't support uh, that one then you can probe this one okay so so just connect your logic analyzers one channel to uh, this pin okay and make sure that your logic analyzers ground pin is properly connected to the ground let me open my logic analyzer software okay so here it is it is ready and now let's uh, compile the code so it compiled successfully and now let's program the chip okay so let me see what's happening it is saying message transmitted here you can see that so don't worry about these messages so this actually I was testing something else so let me reset the board yes it is saying message transmitted okay so let's see in the logic analyzer so let me capture and let me just press reset once again and okay so here is a message and let's okay so this is a can message so which got transmitted so because in the main.c we are calling only one time isn't it so this function is called only one time right great so let's decode this message so this is the data frame right so now for that go to here analyzer so if you are having this hardware and software combination then only you can do this so I actually use logic 8 model so which I purchased around five years back now they have produced different other models I don't know how they perform but, but they say it as pro okay and uh, this logic 8 I cannot probe uh, can H and can L okay it doesn't work so I can only uh, probe can TX and can RX digital lines so they have a write-up how to probe the can signals okay, so you can go through this document okay and you can also chat with them if you have any questions okay uh, in order to explore about their logic analyzer so otherwise if you have digital oscilloscope or any other things uh, in your lab or in your office then you can use that so let's get back to the software and here click plus here and show more analyzers then use can here and after that here select the channel channel is zero and bitrate so you have to give the bitrate properly so we are using 500 kbps right so that's why I would mention it as 500 here okay 500,000 500, okay now save so once you do that here you can see that it decodes your message properly so if you see any errors here then that may be because of not setting the bitrate properly okay so this software doesn't recognize the bitrate automatically I don't know why but you can set that okay so here you can see it has correctly decoded our identifier as standard identifier 65d right so that's what we actually did right so in the cantx 65d was our message and i mean identifier and these are the data that is the message hello right so you can even decode in ascii i think so if you just click on ascii it will sh it will show you the ascii okay h e l l o exactly what we actually transmitted isn't it so but so I would always use hex here okay now after that here you can see that NAC so why NAC because we are in the loopback mode remember okay so the same controller will not act for the message sent by that controller so that's why you will see NAC here if you want to explore more about this I would suggest you to go to loopback section here that they have mentioned that 
so in the loop back mode here you can see that so this mode is provided for self-test functions to be independent of external events the can core ignores acknowledge errors so did you get that so that's the reason even though there is NAC can controller is not retransmitting the message so but according to our discussion what did I say so if there is no ACK then if NART bit is set to zero so that means if you make auto retransmission enable then if there is no ACK then the controller will automatically retransmit the message but that is not true in the loopback mode okay so in the loopback mode acknowledge errors will be ignored so no dominant bit sampled in the acknowledge slot of a data or remote frame okay in loopback mode so in this mode the bx can performs an internal feedback from its tx output to rx input now the actual value of the can rx input pin is this regarded by the bx can the transmitted messages can be monitored on the can tx pin so that's what we are probing here and if you want to find out uh, what is the bitrate then this is actually the start of frame right the start sof so this is the first dominant bit isn't it so now here if you just measure the duration of this you should find this as 2 microseconds isn't it right so 2 microseconds so that means the bitrate is 500 kbps right so so this is the ACK field and for normal operation this this field that is the act field must be dominant okay so here it is recessive because we are in the loopback mode so that's about the transmission and in the next lecture we will see the reception i'll see in the next lecture